So let's talk about tuning. I get asked all the time, what's my tuning process? Now let me just start by, I'm not gonna teach you how to do each kind. I just kinda wanna give you an overview of what I do. So every time I set up a bow, which I just did, the teal bow back there, I just got set up for outdoor. And the first thing I'm gonna do is go to the paper. That is only a starting point for me and I'm gonna show you why um, and give you an example. So I start by going to the paper and I'm gonna get a rough paper tune. Then, you're good. Then I am gonna go torque tune. Now torque tuning is something that everybody should do. Everybody on every bow should torque tune their bow. I have a video on YouTube showing you how to do it. Long story short, you're just moving your rest forward and backward. You can also do it with your sight. I choose not to because it's gonna change my sight magnification, probably the peep size I need, and it's gonna probably change the clarifier I need. So moving my sight screws up a whole lot of stuff for me where if I just move my rest, it's quick and easy. Now, if your rest blade is not perfectly level, when you do that, it's gonna change your tune. So then you can go back to the paper and get your rough paper tune again. So I wanna give you an example from indoor season this year. I shot an arrow and I'm like, yeah, it's pretty close. It's a decent starting point. And let me show you the paper tune now. So now that I actually have phone service, here is the paper tear that I started with during indoor. Now I looked at that and went, that's good enough. That's a great, good starting point. We're gonna go from there. So I shot a little bit, it wasn't as forgiving I was hoping, so I pulled out my bear shaft and I shot my bear shaft. Now, when I shot my bear shaft, it hit a low left six, like barely hanging the scoring rings on a Vegas face. And I was actually pretty shocked. I expected it to be a lot closer than that. So I went back to the paper, I looked at the paper and went, well, yeah, that low left vein is barely shorter. And there's a little bit of carbon mark, you know, roll at two o'clock and a high right paper tear would give you a low left bear shaft, all of that like tracks, it makes sense. But why so far off? I would never have guessed with that paper tear that it would have, my bear shaft would barely hit scoring rings at 20 yards. So here's why that, that paper tear is just a starting point. If, um, well, when I shot my bear shaft, I knew, okay, I want to walk it a little bit closer. Whether my goal is to bear shaft tune or not, it's not, I'll get there later. But if your goal was to bear shaft tune, I would make a minor adjustment, shoot my bear shaft again, and I could see my bear shaft. Now it's in the seven ring. Cool. Make another minor adjustment. Now I can see it move into the eight ring. Now the nine ring. Now the 10 ring. You can track every little movement, right? When you're using your bear shaft as you're moving your rest. If I was only using the paper and I wanted to make that paper tear a little better, I might make one adjustment. And then from there on out, they would all look the same through paper. It's giving me false readings. Like, okay, sure, that's a fine paper tear. I've fixed it one more move, but is my bear shaft in the seven, the nine, the eight? Like, how do you know? You don't know. That is why paper tune is just a rough start because you can make adjustments that don't show up through the paper, but your bear shaft will show every little movement. Okay, now that we are um, clear on that, at that point in time, once now I have my rough paper tune again, I will knock tune all of my arrows. I do not do that with bear shafts. I do that with my fletched arrows. And I do it just like Gillingham does, shoot it through the paper, test all three on each vein, pick the one that's best. That way I know that my arrows are all coming out of the bow the same. I do that pretty much at five yards through the paper. And that is gonna be the next step for me in the tuning process. So once that's done, my next step is I'm just gonna go shoot. But what I'm gonna recommend for the average person versus what I do is a little bit different here. So I'm gonna start with what, what I recommend for the average archer to do. And here's what I mean by this. And don't, don't take offense, okay, it's me. I'm just gonna tell it like it is. If you're not that good, if you can't trust your shots, if you shoot pretty terrible groups in the first place, um, if you've got super inconsistent shots, this is really tough to tune how I tune. So the next step for you and what I would recommend is bear shaft tuning. Now I do that out to 60 yards, um, but for the average person, I'd recommend starting 20 yards, 30 yards, maybe 40 yards. You don't want to be losing arrows. So when you go to bear shaft tune, um, I would recommend trying to get your bear shaft to hit just below your fletched veins. What that means is that you're going to have a little bit of a high tear, a little bit of rise as that comes out of the bow, and it's going to give you any clearance if you're shooting a blade. You don't have to worry about your veins contacting your rest. Um, so I never ever tune with my bear shaft above my fletched veins because that would mean that I have a low tear. It's coming out like this and that's always going to give you a clearance issue. So just as a starting point, that's always a huge no-no for me. So if you are starting out and you're newer to archery and you are not super advanced, going to bear shaft tuning is the next step above paper tuning. I just showed you why. You can find more forgiveness out of your setup. You're making sure that your arrow flight is even better than what you had through paper. 
Sometimes when you go back and you shoot your arrow through paper, it's going to be a perfect bullet hole if you've bare shaft tuned. And sometimes it may not. But guess what? It doesn't matter because the paper can lie to you. I just showed you that. The bare shaft tuning is the next step above paper tuning. Now, let me continue on to what I actually do when I'm tuning. So this is where I was going with this, and this is group tuning. So basically all group tuning is, is shooting to find the most forgiveness in your setup. And what I mean by that is, and, and to be able to group tune, you have to be able to shoot well, shoot consistent shots, trust yourself, and know, okay, this shot broke here, and this is where I expect it to hit. So what I do is I just go shoot a group, and then I see how it is. And if I know that I am capable of shooting better groups than that, then I have more work to do. If it's better than I feel like I've ever shot before, then I'm done, okay? So that's what you really have to be able to evaluate is are you at the point that's it's the best that you can be? And if you can't do that, then please don't group tune or this is a rabbit hole that you will just dive down and, and swirl forever. If you can do that, here's what I typically do. I shoot some groups and the first thing I do is evaluate, okay, are they worse left and right or are they worse up and down? And whichever one is the worst is what I normally start with. So let's say I start and it is really bad left and right. Pretty flat group, but really wide. I'll start by moving my rest left and right. And here's the thing, it's 100% guess and check. Please don't comment on this video and say, well, you didn't tell me which way to move my rest. You don't know. You have to try it, you have to test it for yourself and you have to guess and check. So I'll move it barely to the right maybe half line and I'll shoot and then I evaluate and I might shoot quite a bit or I might be able to tell really quick. It just depends, right? But did my group get better or did it get worse? Then I'll move it maybe half line more. Did it get better? Did it get worse? Then I'll go back to where I started. Maybe try to the left. Did it get better? Did it get worse? And you reevaluate every time, but you can only make one move at a time and then you have to evaluate that. If you move your left and right and you're up and down at the same time, you don't know which one made it worse or which one made it better. So one move at a time then you have to decide, was it better, was it worse, and then move on from there. Keep some detailed notes, obviously, because if you don't have a good memory or you're doing this over the course of a few days, it can get a little tricky. Um, but also keep in mind, when you're moving your left and right, it will also change where your bear shaft is hitting up and down and how your groups are changing up and down. Um, it's all intertwined. But majority-wise, it mainly moves it left and right. So once I get that figured out, then I'm like, okay, let me try to do my height a little bit. If I started with my bear shaft and my fletch vein sitting together, as I said, I never want my bear shaft above my fletch vein, so I'm only ever going to move my rest down from there, which makes it pretty easy. So it's like, okay, let me move it down a little, evaluate, move it down a little, reevaluate. And what I'm trying to do is make my bad shots hit better. I expect my good shots to hit the middle. That's a no-brainer. But those, those shots when you go, oh, when they break, I need those to hit in a tournament. If I have any chance of winning, I have to have those hit. Even the ones where you're like, oh, God, that was terrible. Oh, no. I need those to hit. And so what I'm doing is trying to tune my bow where my bad shots are still hitting the dot. And that's basically what I'm doing. I'm group tuning. I'm making my group better. And so, you know, the nice part is, like I said, you don't have to shoot all perfect shots, but you have to be real with yourself and know, man, that broke an inch off at seven o'clock. Did it hit an inch off at seven o'clock? Was it closer than that? Was it farther out than that? And those are the type of things that I'm looking at and that I'm using as I'm group tuning. Sometimes I can do this in an hour on a setup. Sometimes it could take me a week and I am not kidding. Um, so it's one of those things that, you know, if you're going to do it, it's like, okay, be committed to it and be ready because sometimes it's so easy and other times you just want to beat your head against the wall. But if you really are at a high level and you're looking for like the next thing to push you a little bit further, to, you know, just to get those extra few points that you need out of your setup, that really is how you do it. That is the trick. That is what I use on every setup. I do it for indoor. I do it for outdoor. I did it for my 23s for ASA. I just did it for my skinny arrows for, you know, Redding, Fida, um, field. I do that on every setup. And like I said, some setups, the each change will show you a more drastic difference. Some of them, they look a little more uniform. Um, and every bow may want to end up in a different spot. My ASA arrows are by no means properly bear shaft tuned, but my arrows I just shot are actually hitting just below the dot, which is actually pretty crazy. And it seems to be grouping pretty well there. So just know that every setup, you're going to give it what it wants. You're going to start from scratch. You're going to do this testing process all over again. So hopefully that explains to you kind of what I do for tuning from start to finish. That's what it looks like. Um, there's a lot more even before I tune as far as setup goes, but this was just about tuning. So if you guys have any more questions about this, let me know. I will happily try and make a video explaining for you, but thanks for listening.